All right, folks. We are live now. I hope all the streams are coming out there. I think LinkedIn it's working absolutely fine. Yes, of course we have to keep waiting till it goes live. I think YouTube is already live now, so it will be live on my YouTube as well. So do check that out as well. So yes, I think YouTube is live, and that's absolutely great. And we are live on LinkedIn as well. So hey, folks, this wow. is me, Vishwas Nayan. Thanks for tuning in on your Sunday morning. And it means a lot when we are facing a new era of AI. That's your generative AI. And now, Ashish was, as always, been a developer from heart, but still, he is going and learning topics on generative AI, and he is giving out such insights. Which is required for the today's world. I think the biggest challenge in adapting generative AI is it's moving very fast, and we as developers, we as engineers, we are trying to capture that pace. We are trying to be in the entire flow of what generative AI has to offer. I think thanks to Ashish for being on a Sunday morning, delivering a talk on generative AI, actually a live podcast on generative AI, and giving us some insights about. how this industry is going to perceive the devops industry is going to perceive the capabilities of generative ai and on the other hand a lot of demos and lot of talks going on thank you so much ashish for being on the show means a lot hey vishwas hi first of all good morning to all of you who are live uh, so thanks to having me on a sunday morning especially as vishwas said and um, it it means a lot of course uh, you you came on a sunday morning and you joined this podcast so uh, thanks thanks to vishwas to uh, to having so much good podcast i was just going through the past podcast as well what you did in the, what you did and it, it it's amazing so yes it's it's a recommended if you have not uh, 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 seen that please go and check uh, so yes um, this is ashish i am a devrel india uh, i am uh, at elastic i mostly handle the communities and uh, help people with their architect how they can solve uh, their uh, problem with, by using the elastic stacks and of course the other other dev stacks everything so uh, Oh wow! We we getting the audience. Uh, that that's yeah. great to see in the comments, folks. Uh, so yeah, that that's a quick introduction. So I'm I'm not a DevOps developer, to be guys. You guys are experts. So I'm just here uh, to talk what uh, you know what what is the possible integration we can do. What what how DevOps is leveraging uh, you know to nowadays the generative AI. How you can leverage it. And uh, yeah, whatever the experience, whatever the material I have, I'm happy to share with you today. So yeah. All right, Ashish. Let's get it started. You know, I was so excited for this talk, by the way, because I'm learning generative AI as a guy who has seen mm -hmm. evangelism in the other hand, where it was all Kubernetes scale and delivering values and putting the visibility on the other hand. But today we are seeing generative AI everywhere. So, you know, I think it's time for us to start with some questions out there. So, let me just start with this first question: How is generative AI? Being utilized in the DevOps to automate and optimize software testing processes or software delivery processes. Can you share some insights on how generative AI is leveraged in the today's world in order to make mm -hmm. DevOps, software engineering, as well as software testing life or the job easier for the today's world? Got got it. I think uh, I think it's pretty simple. We you just go and chat GPT and type it. Uh, it's it's that simple. You're getting the all all answers right. Uh, of course, the software testing is become more easy. When we say easy, it's it's not that straightforward. You just uh, get your input and you it will get the ready made solution. It's not that simple. Still, the generative AI in uh, in the field of the DevOps is evolving, right? Uh, so, uh, if you if you're going to type, okay, generate a um, generate a software test case, right? Uh, te test cases, right? Te test cases for the manual testing. Uh, of course, it will generate, but it 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 will be accurate. The accuracy level won't be that. You know the hundred uh, percent. It it would be the sixty seventy because it's a very basic use case. It will give, but. uh it will it will do the work of uh, 50 60% you have to tune it according to your use case and then you have to leverage it so most um, i mean there is a uh, there is a already pre paid model in the market which you can directly integrate and they will generate the test cases okay one uh, the second is uh, 
I think testers or, or probably the developers are using this or generating the documents. Okay, so uh, probably if you're writing a code and just you uh, tell the chat GPT or some some other uh, LLM model, okay, generate a document for this and it will generate it in a beautiful way. So this is how nowadays the people are leveraging. Of course, it's it's not accurate. You have to go through again. Uh, but yes, still we have uh, we we need to evolve in a generative AI in terms of DevOps and this thing, this fields. So yeah, I think yes, that's it. I think you, uh, uh, Vishwas, you are also working with lots of things. So if you have anything to share, yeah, I think I think what I saw in the developer landscape was basically how can I get to know how my code performs in production before it goes to production. Mm -hmm. I think to me, mm -hmm. to to me, that was the journey, right? You know, there are tools which are which are today capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. That means they can mm -hmm. say you how will be the behavior of the code when it goes out there in the production or else exactly. as good as there are some SAS tools or else the seam tools which are already there from Elastic where they are already predicting or else they're absolutely analyzing it before something wrong happens, right? So I think yeah, to yeah. me, technology has always been giving that accessibility back in the market. If we don't give right. the accessibility back in the market, I think there's a lot that goes behind, goes wrong. That there can be a lot that can go wrong at any given point of time. Cool. Absolutely. I think, yes, absolutely. I think I think it's a it's a very good deviation that we took, right? You know, uh, mm -hmm. testing was absolutely great, development was absolutely great, but DevOps is something that we we still mm -hmm. we still go out there, Google out many things, and we come back and. We, we feel that, okay, we have achieved something by Google. Thank you so much, Google. But today, ChatGPT is also helping us in many different ways. Sorry. So now let's yes. let's analyze the pointer of anomaly detection. You know, Jet mm -hmm. has always shown an immense step that is at least five steps forward to whatever we did with AI, right? You know, I think the way we architect solution is changing. Everybody wants to put their hands on session or else even an ants on production use case of generative AI today. So anomaly is mm -hmm. one. Anomaly is one place that they are trying to put in. So generative mm -hmm. AI has shown a promising results in anomaly detection. How can DevOps teams leverage the technology to identify and, res and mm -hmm. respond to some of the nasty behaviors that we see in in the ups and the downs of the performance that we are seeing. So that's an abnormal behavior that we see. So how can mm -hmm. we as engineers leverage generative AI in order to solve the anomaly or the abnormal behavior of the systems that we are rigging up? Mm -hmm. Wonderful point, Vishwas. The anomaly detection, of course, it's playing a vital role with, whether say it's a DevOps, it's it, uh, whether it's a observability field, you know, the the security kind of thing. So I, I would like I would like to link this with uh, let's say one of the examples. Let's say you have a uh, logs collector in your environment right uh in, in your uh, cluster and it's you collecting the logs and uh suddenly your logs get spiked right uh if, if i'm getting the five thousand logs per hour and uh, the the number is suddenly uh, goes beyond the fifty thousand, then it's it's it means something it's a suspicious it's happened whether it's a positive or negative that's another question but yes uh you should be the first person who who came to know okay this this threshold has been passed right so uh yes i uh, i mean i know we we can set on you know the log spike and these kind of the things you can you can do the anomaly detection on you know let's say on your web server uh if someone is performing the ddos attack probably the smtp endpoints right it, it is a i think uh mostly the famous endpoint both two five two five and two five so you can you can just add their anomaly detection and just check whether whether it's uh, you getting the spike in your uh, incoming rates incoming traffic so uh, if I want to give the visualization, just uh, let me share a screen because in in a elastic uh, in a kibana, the, uh, there are certain things which you can do with the log spikes. Uh, just a minute. So, uh, am I? Uh, the screen is visible, right? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Perfect. So this is an observability overview. I'm I'm here on this page. Right, and uh, I have uh, just I'm giving the example, and suddenly this is my log rating things, right? Uh, the the graph is showing the log rating, and suddenly it goes, it it activate, right? Uh, the the spike I can see, and the reason 
is 101.816 log entries in last five minutes. There's a reason, right? So I wanted to check what's what's wrong with that with that hours, right? What what happened in that time? So uh, Elastic it, it gives the the uh, the functionality where you can perform the anomaly on your logs on the specific field on specific metric. So let me show you. So simply uh, I here the log event I can I can see there is a Postgres SQL dot log where the two thousand logs are there the most one. So I'm I'm going to simply click on an action. Uh, it will take me into the stream, right? So these, this is the common stream where you can see all logs in the real time, whether it's a security, uh, file bit, the observability, search, everything, all logs comes here. And I can see it's it's just a simply info log. It's it's no, it's a PG bench history. Um, there, there is a no no error I can see, but still I, I'm very curious what what happened with that. Okay, so uh, let's let's go on the machine learning menu, and here in the machine learning, uh, simply go on uh, and on explain log rate spike, and in a log rate spike, I'm simply going on the logs. Mm -hmm. So uh, here I can see there is a spike, right? Twelve thousand seven eighty documents. I want to check this. Uh, the Elastic will automatically just capture this deviation and it will start analyzing this. It is going to take some time. Of course, it's analyzing that particular time frame logs, what's wrong, and we will we get to know that. So, uh, okay, I think uh, here. So if you if you noticing, uh, I'm just mouse overing this field name and uh, this, this is the data, I, this uh, uh, log analysis, the, uh, the analysis I'm getting from there. As soon as I'm the overing these things, the this graph graph color is getting changed, you know, which means because of these logs, the anomaly has been uh, occurred, right? Uh, it, it's, contribu it's contributing to log spike. So the thing is, the related user is PG Bench, okay? Now I've got some idea. The PG Bench is a Postgres bench, uh, Postgres benchmark uh, tool. So if you want to benchmark the Postgres capability, use this. So some, uh, some, uh, someone probably the, with the username PG Bench has activated the PG Bench tool on a production environment rather than on staging. And then I got to know, okay, this is this is why it, that spike is came. Right. The similarly, you can you can uh, you uh, you can go for uh, if you want to do the DDoS attack. You want to check on a web server, the Nginx server, Apache. Just go and and uh, select your metrics. What you want to you know uh, monitor. As soon as you get the spike, whether it's SMTP, Nginx, the web server, anything, uh, you get to know. And on the top of it, you can set the alert. Okay, I got this spike. Right. So this is how you can leverage the anomaly detection in a, in a DevOps world, in a, in a uh, various metrics on a various metric. As a DevOps, we are in the absorbability field as well. We are collecting the uh, system, mat system metrics, let's say a CPU utilization, memory, which process is using the high CPU. It's, it's a very challenging thing, right? Uh, okay, this process is killing it. So a uh, few, few days ago, I, uh, I, I found this uh, malware uh, came, I think, uh, just K Dev, sorry, I, I cannot. Yeah, K Dev team, uh, TMP F, F, I, I don't know how to spell, but it's it's kind of kinsing malware. It it called right. So I don't know how it came into my uh, Linux box. Okay, and it's uh, it started. Uh, okay, um, just yeah, it's it started uh, taking to my CPU till three hundred percent. And I got I don't get to know about it because there was, there was a no observability set in my system, right? Uh, so this is how you can prevent. And th this is a very bad malware. If if I say it it uh, it is like a crypto mining malware. So uh, they they got something loophole in my center seven box and they put it in that. And as soon as I'm running uh, making my system up, it's running and it's taking this three hundred CPU utilization is used for the mining. So yes, you can prevent such a threat, such such uh, bad things by using the anomaly detection. Yeah, I think I think there is a lot of models that are coming up into the yes. picture, right? You know, Worm GPT is one of it. Worm GPT came mm. out in the market, and people were like, you know what? 
I I really worked hard to become a hacker today, and today there's a GPT model that is already built, which can turn anybody mm. into a hacker today. So I think mm. I think there's a there's a dark side to other things, right? You know, we yes. go out there, yes. figure out, okay, this is something as a potential, and there'll be one guy mm. who will obviously be thinking like, can I use it to something which is okay, the dark side of the technology, so that it mm. also helps us in not just not just utilizing it as in the dark side of the technology probably chaos engineering practices can be one of it like it can be yeah. as good as if we get ddosed thousands of times by somebody else if thousand servers are coming and hitting us is our system stable enough to detect it or else is our mm-hmm. system stable enough to even go through it i think that's how that's how right. chat gpt or anything is coming up into the picture i think agree like any are more are it... coming up. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Any other model is comes in a picture. Uh, I, I just adding this. Yesterday, I was uh, I was checking, and there was a Evil GPT. It's it's kind of extended of the Warm GPT. Uh, I don't know how it gets evolved in this direction, man. Uh, but yes, uh, if you if you are uh, talking about the NER model, the other LLM model. So as a DevOps, right? The, as a DevOps guy, I'm collecting the logs from lots of things. It's not just a logs, but it, it could be the any information. It could be the, uh, the system information, user information, anything. You have to deal with the multiple things, right? Uh, so uh, there is a survey. Uh, we uh, 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 I think Deloitte had done and something. Uh, we having only 20% data in organized knowledge. The eighty percent data it's still unstructured, unorganized, unorganized, right? So, uh, if if you have a such situation, how you can label those unstructured data, correct? And where then uh, the NER models and the other uh, good models comes in a picture? Uh, so, okay, I think uh, we we got a question. I think we should we take it or and take it. Okay, how how, how do, do you know? Yeah, how do you know? If our Linux is compromised, uh, how do you track it or uh, know about it? Okay, so uh, there, there is a, I think if I'm uh, talking about the Elastic perspective, we having a seam and the endpoint security solution, which build for such things. So if you got any malware or threat detection in your system, it will generate the alert and it will fix it there itself. So if you have, if you have such requirement, uh, please go and check about the elastic security it has uh, the, it give this exact solution which you are asking the kpm right uh, linux can be compromised okay this is this i think follow up question is there i think nishant is asking to the kpm but yeah we can i think continue on the ner model so suppose you you are getting the lots of unstructured data and you want to analyze what, what kind of data it is so let me uh, quickly show uh, yeah, so I think uh, uh, people who are using the Elastic, they, they must be aware about this window. It's a Kibana, it's a Kibana dev console where I can perform the la- query directly on Elastic search, right? So uh, this is an example. I have a bird base in, in case this, this model is deployed already. And uh, I'm going to just check what, what it's give the output and just do the uh, hitting the info API. And let's see this. Okay. Now, uh, this this is a mask mask model, right? It, it's going to fill the which is not present, right? So Paris is the mask of a France. So here it predicted the capital, correct? Paris is the capital of France, and you will get the exact context, exact context, right? Uh, similarly, if if I came here, the Mumbai is a city in the mask, right? So it should be get the India as as we getting, right? Uh, let let's do some test classification whether whether it's a positive negative I think it's it's very basic but you can uh, create this all these data on fly as soon as you inserting the data into Elastic right so it's a it's a negative statement the Elastic is a perfect platform for uh, knowledge NLP application let's see this uh, it it gives the positive one right now this is my favorite NER so. Uh, suppose you have an unstructured data and which which comes with this line. Uh, there are many people working for Elastic in North America and the United States. Now you want to label this. Label this with the, with the entity, right? So just just uh, try this infer API, and now it will show the Elastic is an organization, uh, the North America is a location, and the United States also location. Now you your data is getting tagged with the, some of the specific entity, and you can perform the more insights in this your unstructured data, correct? 
uh, simply if if we uh, go there's an, another example uh, yes the bob marley is a person elastic is a organization the jamaica is a location correct this is how you can you can leverage this different kind of thing you know the in, with the ner you can tag your data and label it and then you perform a lots of insights you are getting and make your system more uh, more ins insightful yes sure i think uh, girish is asking one question on how generic ai is being used for the feature you shown in elastic search i think uh, is there is there any specific use case on elastic search which is also part of some security practices being used with all the models that have rigged up or else anything like that so uh, so elastic is not in you know the exact generating a things but we are leveraging the generative uh, generative ai okay okay uh, so let's say uh, we having a observability ai assistant available so if you got any error uh, let's say with the apm my, like uh, phone not found not found or memory uh, i mean out of memory error kind of this you just get the, uh, get the help of the ai assistant over there and it will give you the desired result it will give you the summarization of that particular problem and this is how you will get the more direction how how you can solve it right with the help of the observability ai assistant the same with goes uh, with we having a security ai assistant as well uh, so if if you got any threat and detection the malware detection the, at the, at the, there itself you can chat with that uh, particular thing and you you can get the some uh, insights from the uh, security ai assistant uh, I okay i think uh, my ashish and he's asking this question on like the question is the scope of the session like out of the scope of okay. the question but i'm a junior developer engineer how can i differentiate devops engineer from a developer and an environment manager follow up question is how is how big market is if you want to pursue career in devops engineer who uses generative ai i think i think this is uh, think... absolutely a question that is supposed to be asked here I yeah, think uh, Vishwas is a perfect person to answer this because he's uh, he been a advocate and now he's in a DevOps field. And Vishwas, if if you want to give attempt to this, yeah, like uh, I think it's it's never the nevertheless that I always say that we still use Google to solve our mm -hmm. problem statement, right? So using Google, we used to dabble around with different articles, different technologies that used to come up in the picture. it used to be like you should be knowing your seo keywords right in order to write the write the fine solution like uh like i'll just say you one thing so exactly mm -hmm. exactly two months before people started learning about how helm charts can really solve the problem statement of something to be deployed on kubernetes so today if you see okay. how helm charts is being used is basically can i generate helm charts using chat gpt so knowing mm. the potential is absolutely fine and using a tool or a technology in order to build something that is something which is more fascinating so the market in the future is always going to be like how can you bring the entire accessibility standpoint of anybody in the world can look into the system and everybody can rig up the same system which can make money so i always say that mm. make sure that you have less amount of plumbing work in your system more amount of business logic that is being run so in a future it. it's it's basically about enabling businesses in order to drive their business logics much more faster and quicker but generative ai is just going to be an enabler so you mm -hmm. still go back to the knowledge of how much cpu is getting used how much ram is getting used and there will be a point where yeah. generative ai will be like you know what i'm just getting hallucinated stop me stop using me at one point of time so you correct. should know your correct. basics right so yes so to, to me market is never going to change market is still going to be stagnant in terms of the opportunities that we are getting the business logic that people want to run so that will still mm -hmm. be there but developers or devops engineers using generative ai is basically going to give low code and low code and no code a new form factor which is connected to generative ai and now you start delivering much effective Got as well as much scalable solution for the future so that's my take on it yeah yeah agreed agreed even uh, if you want to differentiate like uh, 
how how devops engineer from developers to be honest uh, uh developer write a code the business logic they they uh, focus on that and that you have to deploy in you know the environment certain environment on the production something like this is your responsibility but uh, on the same, uh, on the other hand uh, it's always you know complement to each other so you you cannot say uh, you 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 don't have to write a code sometimes you have to write a bash script or some some other shell scripting and you have to do that so that you can automate certain things at your level of course there is a very good scope of the devops even if the generative ai is coming so don't worry about it if uh, there there are buzzing is going on the the generative ai is going to steal the jobs and everything but i i'm not uh, it's it's like uh, one of the podcasts i was listening you know uh, it was the same hype when the uh, computer was invented the calculator was invented like now the job is going to steal by the computers and this but it generated a more jobs so this is the same way we should look at this and yeah the scope is good in a devops of course uh Cool. Uh, I think, which is causing gap in industry. Ah, uh, that is uh, yeah. Uh, Vishwas, you want to take it? This competency is a challenge, which is uh, causing a gap industry for a DevOps. So competency, as in, if you can just elaborate, uh, Vishwas. So I think I think you, when you, Kubernetes came in. When mm-hmm. Kubernetes came in, everybody thought Kubernetes is going to steal away DevOps roles, but what it did was it generated more devops roles in the yes. other form factor right you know yes. elastic yes. got a new trend in the kubernetes world because elastic was not just a logging tool it also helps you in debugging most of the things which can go wrong in kubernetes right so so that, i think that's... competency was always be there so when kubernetes mm-hmm. came kubernetes was supposed to be learned and you relearned whatever you did with vms and you still put it as a principle out there so that's the first principle and you still go ahead with it so competency yeah. will obviously keep going for sure correct 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 it will it will be with the time and uh, yes, uh, elastic is also uh, of course it's, it's playing a vital role in, uh, in terms of devops you can especially with the observability and uh, uh, monitoring uh, the kubernetes you can monitor the docker kubernetes everything and you can trace each and every error uh and you can correlate with this of course now let's say i have given the example ai ops now it's coming new in a devops right so probably you have to prepare yourself around that ai ops ml ops you you maybe like i have given the example the log rate how you can um set up the anomaly detection so this this could be the next challenge for you but yeah this is how you should you should think you can plan around it yeah i think i think we talked a lot about competency we talked a lot about yeah uh, getting ahead with the generative ai but if mm-hmm. you just go back and see what tncf ecosystem is you take a, you take a xerox on an a3 or an a1 sheet it still is not possible to fit every tool inside it i think that's how big no no tncf ecosystem is and that's how big you know the technology yes. is moving so i think in a complex cloud native environment monitoring managing infrastructure can be challenging how does how do you ashish feel that you know ai will help us in automating the infrastructure management optimizing the resource allocation minimizing the downtimes in the real world because the real i think the detail lies in the devil like you know mm-hmm. there is always a challenge right. that comes up you know when kubernetes came up people thought that you know we can scale more effectively but Heads down to every Kubernetes right. engineer who's failing, who's facing downtimes today. Yes. It's because either we have misconfigured a lot, or else we mm. have overly right. engineered upon something. So I think something yes. can go wrong here and there. So, what's your uh, take on complex cloud native infrastructure it. that can be automated using the generative AI? Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, to be honest, in in the CNCF world, I don't think uh, the CNCF and the, you know the, this infrastructure management. I don't see right now there is a certain thing. Let's say your capacity planning, what what VM I should use, and um, how many pods I should run. These kind of the question is still very specific to uh, use case, right? And of course, uh, I I haven't seen the generative AI is a playing a vital vital role here. Or we are just taking pull up pulling the generative AI in the in this infrastructure management things. Uh, but more of that, you can of definitely use generative AI in certain things. So. 
these are the some of the creative decision making let's say uh, what should be my um um uh, vm size uh, how how much ram i should use it is very specific correct uh, but of course you can automate by using let's say uh, you want to generate a docker file you want to generate a terraform uh, uh, the cost optimization i mean people are using the chat gpt for a cost optimization as well i have just read so uh, you can use those stuff right uh you you can uh, in in a ci cd pipeline if i say uh, if you want to write to some of the terraform uh, i just going through the one of the uh, what we can say uh, one of, there is one of tool let, let me show uh, aica i'm not sure if you guys are using that uh, aiac sorry uh, can you just zoom okay. in a little bit yeah just zoom, zoom in a little bit yeah that would be perfect Yeah, it's good. Yes. Yeah, this this okay. looks absolutely. Uh, so, uh, let me let me show the GitHub page as well. Just a minute. If I can show this. Okay, I think I'm ready. So, it's a Firefly AIC. Just go and check the GitHub. Okay, so this is a tool. Uh, it's it's of course it behind the scene. It's using the Chat GPT. You need the Open API key, and you can just say uh, AIC generate uh, get Docker file ready for uh, to deploy the Node app, right? Uh, so let me show you uh, AIC get uh, Docker file for deploying Node app. So uh, let okay, it's generating the code. and uh, similarly we can we can find some of the more example let's say get terraform for a highly available eks right it will generate it will generate on there itself yeah this is how it it generated now uh, and now it it's not it's automatically uh, cut the all text which chat gpt web model gives right you just simply uh, say save to file and i am simply say docker file and uh, yeah my docker file is ready correct you just docker build uh, hit the docker build docker and your deployment will go up but still i'm not saying just blindly believe this it it has uh, it it makes uh, jobs easy of course till till certain uh, thing let's say uh, 70 80% but again you have to just go through what is the what is the app work directory uh, if if any volume you want to mount you know certain things and you have to change the prompt of course uh, in when you using the generative ai the prompt engineering is uh, uh very much important the context what you are giving and accordingly it will generate your uh things right so this is one of the tool uh, i have seen people are using uh you can you can use this to automate yourself to automatically generate the things terraform or uh, docker file um there is a beautiful example the mongo query the database query you know on you can just uh generate and use it so this is how you can see how how you can uh, automate uh you know certain things in a devops not fully of course but the certain things definitely we should automate and uh we uh, it it will be quick it will be it will be uh, enhance our speed right so yeah this is how i think we should we should uh, leverage the generative ai sure i think i think the biggest challenge that anybody can face today using generative ai is somebody can push in a supply chain attack into your models that are happening that is really giving you this amount of insights probably as good as you know what supply chain attack means is basically somebody behaving like an open source contributor being very nice to the pr the guys who merge the pr into the main branch or anybody and now they will be knowing that probably a terraform code can obviously put in some sort of an rc execution into any of your it can be a, it can be a small script which can be ingested mm-hmm. into your terraform and that can really give you an rc remote code execution i think things can go in that direction yes. as well so yeah i can't be completely relied on but yeah i can really accelerate your work workflow every yeah. single day so yes. i think that's how it is so i think Let's go to this last question that we planned for today's podcast. You know, one of the significant challenges in DevOps today is obviously maintaining the balance in the security and the and the balance of being okay. available over a course of time. Or else, 
doing the re- mm-hmm. engineering the right way so there is a lot of challenges that are coming up so how do you feel generative ai can address the balance that we have to take in order to rightly rig up an architecture and also something as good as it does it with more responsible and a secure fashion i think we plan for so many things on an app which can obviously give you an insight on how to generate a docker file or else anything which is related to a comment or something like right. that so i think you can go ahead and address how generative ai can really tackle the problem statement of doing the mm-hmm. devops the right way but also in a security mindset that is embedded within it got it okay so uh, of course the security is uh, important uh, whether it's a devops develop development uh, okay in in everything and uh, uh, the security should be by design right uh, so uh, i would say in in a security of course there is some of the models are available which which you can directly you, they can scan your code on fly and they can say whether this particular piece of code is vulnerable or not you can you can use those you can you can try uh, but the 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 answer is same it's it's still not you know the the accuracy i i cannot guarantee it. you you have to uh, you have to go through it again and uh, the certain things you can definitely secure like uh, like uh, if you have a infra so you can just ask the generative uh, ai like the scan my infra we do the vapt test right uh, just simple the port scanning if my port is open you know some of the exploit you are ex- exploitable or not these kind of the, of course these kind of the things you can automate definitely but uh, something uh, very custom you you have you need to check on this and uh, on on the another side this is something on a generative ai but uh, let's say on a elastic side we give the security we we having a threat detection seam uh malware detection kind of these stuff uh where you can leverage the security ai assistant if something happen or something goes wrong right uh, so, so for example um some uh, you you getting the attack of for ssh login right uh you you will get the ai assistant over there i mean first of all you will get the alert and you will get the ai assistant to uh, quickly uh, detect what's the problem it is right you don't have to navigate those hundred of things but yes just ask to the chat uh, chat bot the ai assistant security ai assistant it will help you so the the, the same way which i have shown you the log uh, similarly you can do with that and uh, yeah this is how this is what i think uh, we should leverage the security things in, in the perspective of generative ai and of course there is a part of um, the uh, um, the devops things it is part the observability the monitoring and these 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 are the also the part like you, you are you are creating a dashboard uh, things so people are leveraging so let me let me give the quick example people are creating a dashboard with the, with the chat gpt right so if if i uh, tell chat gpt i have a prompt ready just a minute uh, let's say i'm telling chat gpt okay uh, generate a dashboard Uh, create a real time system monitoring dashboard using a stream related to the visualization so it will give in the code of course I'm, but it it's not guaranteed it's going to work 100% but let's see i'm just simply copying it uh, right and uh, let me create one file dash dot py i'm just pasting it okay just i have pasted it and i'm going to run this oh sorry okay i think i have to activate my conda environment just a minute okay so okay you will start getting your dashboard the settings the cpu usage everything so this, this still this is a buggy right you can see correct it is not coming again i have to uh, as i told you there is a system it, it will generate a code it will it will give it will do the 60 70% but you have to do that so let, let me let me try another uh, just a prompt uh, let's say uh, stream right to code to show the graph for the cpu usage right uh, i think you you already uh, have you must have tried this all of these things and i'm happy to have uh, uh, to get a more you know uh, the experience in the comment box so how you are leveraging chat gpt to generate what uh, meanwhile i'm showing this 
Okay, uh, let me quickly delete this. And pasting and sorry. Okay, and paste it. And now I'm going to run this. Okay, but still it's, it's, it seems. Uh, Okay, I think it, it's not coming, but it, it was working when, when I did. So there is this is also one of the uh, problem with the chat GPT or, or any of the LLM model. You won't get the exact response every time, right? Even if your prompt is correct. And that is what called the hallucination and uh, you cannot guarantee this particular result is okay. So that's why I'm saying the in, even if the observability, the security and these kind of thing, you, uh, I would say you have to uh, take a more control on your data, on your on your these things, but you cannot fully rely on that, right? Right now, maybe it it it, it will evolve definitely in the future. But yes, uh, let me show something is offering. Okay, I think it's it's not working. But yes, this is how people are generating the dashboards, and you can you can tweak something is wrong, and you can okay. This is something error is coming. But yes, you can tweak it and you can run it. So uh, yes. You can do like this. Uh, there is a one one more. Uh, uh, I, I think we uh, we uh, Vishwas we having uh, some more question. I mean, of course, the audience having a question, but we having our question more. Or should I just pick yeah, it from the can, uh, one more? Okay. You cool. can go cool, ahead cool. with the demos now. Okay. 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 So uh, this is a one more thing. Let's say um, you you are collecting the lots of logs, right? Uh, and uh, the logs is let's say suppose it's info. Now. Uh, the logs is message is getting with the uh, change with the minute messages. Let's say um, a login module is running or sign up module is running. Though these these logs are uh, kind of the same logs only. It's it's a group. It's the same group. It's the same behavior. But the message is getting changes, right? So if I tell you in in a uh, in let's say a traditional search way, please group or aggregate these logs, it will be hard for you because the, the text is totally different from each other, correct? But let's let's say, uh, go to the log pattern, and this is a, in the machine learning thing. Let's go on the log pattern and we can do the logs. Now, uh, in the log pattern analysis, you just select this. Suppose I'm, I'm, I'm selecting the fill, uh, let's say a message, right? The message and run pattern analysis. So it will, it will uh, uh, going to run the analysis on the all logs and it's going to group the log with the same behavior, with the same groups, right? So here it is, like I got the 74620, like this is the count uh, where uh, this select star from products happened. After that, there is a this logs. So you will get the idea what uh, what is the highest log I'm getting for what purpose, you know, and for what group. And then this is how you can detect something suspicious. Of course, you can you can plan accordingly. Okay, what why this query is happening so much time? It's it's hitting my DB, right? So yes, this this is what you can do with the log pattern analysis and this thing. So uh yeah, I think we are we are good. Uh on the on the similar say uh we we having an observability AI system as we, we were talking about. So let's suppose you, uh, this is a, of course observability, the service map. And uh, let's say this is a bird eye view. Uh, it's an APM, elastic APM services. So as you can see, this this is a in red, which means it, it's a down right now, correct? And you want to see what, what is happening. So just click on this. Uh, the anomaly score is 99, which is a very high again, right? So let's, let's go on a traces and uh, Okay, now it's it's on a services. The adverse services, it's a, health is a critical, right? Because this is something is a problem. So just click on that. Okay, uh, now I'm going simply on error. Okay, I got this error. Now one thousand millisecond timeout on a connection, right? Now uh, what to do with this? We we got the error. How to debug? So I'm simply click on that message, and here is the where AI assistant comes in a picture. So here we sending the context to the Azure Open AI and it will give you the response. Okay, wh what happened with this? And uh, you will get the desired explanation, the summarization, what what what's uh, went wrong. 
and you can of course debug it will help to help in the debug right so the same way you can leverage with the security ai assistant as well um, uh, if you if you're getting some threat detection you can do that right so uh, yeah i think uh, that's it from my side uh, for the day i think i'm happy to take a more questions or a discussion or yeah i think folks i think it would be better if you can join this live stream link which i'm sharing with you guys in the comment section here you can directly come to us ask the questions instead of typing it now i know that you know you know typing a generic ai question is very 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 difficult because you have a lot of questions to ask to <laughs> ask you have a lot of lot of you know i, I know i know the i know the pain of writing something on a live stream you know, it's so tough to right, right. put it out there so make sure that you use this linkedin live stream that i'm sharing or else you can do drop us the questions in the yes, comment yes. section or else you can drop it drop it down in the dms we'll just be happy to address it all yeah, yeah i'm happy so to take better. a question offline as well uh, after this session as well feel free to uh, dm me on a linkedin i'm happy to take a question over there if you have i think i think let let's continue the discussion about uh, i think the tools which are coming up the ecosystem that we are trying to address you know idp is something that i always figure out okay this is what my system needs to look like and this is how mm -hmm. my platform will be looking at one fine mm -hmm. day and we will be using all these tools but still even though you have a constant set of tools even though you have a constant set of logics that is running behind probably an internal developer platform is much more versatile in terms of its own perks like you know it has to be configured in this way it has to be configured in that way so i think generative ai is going to take a lot of step forward and it's yeah. also going to give us that edge towards architecting something right so what's your take on right. elastic enabling that process because elastic has one one such entity that mm -hmm. it's working on generative ai i think elsa model is right. always coming up yes. so there are a lot yes. of self trainable as well as right. a customizable model mm -hmm. which is coming up so right. what do you feel right. is the impact that elastic ecosystem is going to have in terms of an idp approach as well as in the devops ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, got it so uh, we know elastic uh, uh, for you know collecting the logs the information everything in a, in a single source which is the elastic search now um, elastic is uh, also offering the elastic search is also offering the vector search right in, it's uh, there in a community edition as well you can use it for a free you can generate your vectors just store it into the elastic search and perform the semantic search over there right so if you are building some idp or you know the information in a warehouse where you have you want to perform some uh, semantic search on on your data on your system data user data you know, what the uh, whatever the data you have so you feel free to leverage this uh, vector search capability of the elastic and uh, let let me quickly show you how this looks like okay so uh, i i uh, okay i have uh, some of the data uh, it's it's a news database okay so sorry yes it's a news database so if you can see here it is um, my news title right uh, it's 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 a real news okay uh, i have scrapped so uh, if i want to perform something you know the semantic search on this the semantic search is it's not just you're going to search on your keyword but of of uh, but also the meaning of that keyword and uh, the context of that keyword right so uh, let's suppose i'm going to uh, first i'm going to uh, hit the simple search with the query match title it is a full text search uh, how we do traditionally or how the bm25 search right now i'm hitting the title where the value should be share market news correct now let me hit this uh, i'm getting this results right so uh share picks because it it's pick this keyword share and it's giving me the result accordingly uh, ad revenue share elon musk only x blue this, this is one of the headline right short english hindi news uh okay and yes the news is got captured the news keyword as we came here but it's it's not giving me the you know the contextual data document so let me hit the same same keyword with the with the 
with my machine learning model, which is the Elser. So Elser is a proprietary model for Elastic, which which is which uh, generate the sparse vector. Okay, whatever the data you uh, feeding to the elastic search, it will generate the vec uh, respective vectors and it will store into the same document. Now, when I'm going to hit the same on the same title field, okay, now the result will be different. The share market news, now I'm getting the proper result like Zomato shares cross 100 mark, right? This, is a, this was the news last to last week, I think. Zomato share, uh, shares hit 52 weeks high after reporting, right? So this is how you, you get the more context on it. Let me give you the more example. Let's say um, I'm hitting uh, Bitcoin, right? Um, now, in my, in, my, all, in my whole data, there is a one record only which match with the Bitcoin keyword, which is this, right? Uh, because the words, uh, the, this particular token was present here, the terms. Now let's do the semantic search. I'm hitting the same keyword again. Okay, now I'm getting the contextual data. So here, the, the first news is same, but the another news, uh, let's say, uh, arrested 20 in a crypto frauds government, right? Now the Bitcoin is related to with the crypto. So this, my Elser model is automatically uh, uh, detected that, okay, this can be related to this particular word or this part particular synonyms. So, uh, yeah, so it's giving me this particular desire as well, right? So uh, the same crypto Ponzi scam, right? Uh, the crypto stolen by hacker, these, all the news is coming, correct? This is how, this, uh, this is the magic of the semantic search. So if you are building, you know, the uh, information warehouse in your, for your organization, IDP, and you want, uh, you have a such a use case where you have you want to implement this semantic search. Uh, or, uh, I would recommend to give a try uh, to the Elastic semantic search, and uh, yeah, you can leverage this vector capability of the Elastic search. Right? Sure, I think I think this is great. This is great when when you know you see a model which is absolutely great and good enough to make sure that you look back at the product which is there. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. you utilize this model as an API or else as good as something which can be used within the platform. And now you accelerate the processes that is happening. You accelerate the operations which are happening. I think that makes a lot of sense. With generative AI coming into the picture, I think jobs will become much more easier. I think people used to talk about work-life balance, right? Work-life balance is going to be much more Celebrated as well as much more celebrated, Sebiziada. You can obviously say that much more emphasized in the tomorrow's world yeah. because there is a there is an intelligence that is driving you. I think there's a lot of yes. things that we can cover up. I think Ashish will be there next month, or else any any time slot that we feel free, we'll obviously come back on the live show. We'll do sure. a podcast together and we will give you more insights. I think thank you folks for joining. Uh, joining us in this live show Sunday morning. I think it's Sunday afternoon now. So sacrificing your Sunday afternoon as well and staying with us and chatting out with some amazing questions, amazing insights. Yeah, yeah. I think that was great. That was great. Thank you so much, friends. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, everyone uh, to be here. Okay. And uh, feel free to uh, have any, if, if you have any question, feel free to ask on a DM. My DM is open. And yeah, uh, probably I would like, I would love to have, uh, to be with you again in, on, on the podcast, next podcast, Vishwas. So it was great uh, to be here. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, folks. This is Vishwas Nai signing off from this live show. Thank you so much, my friends. See you soon in the next podcast with another guest, probably a different topic, not just generative AI. So see you soon. <laughs> see you soon, friends. Yep. Bye.